from midnight tonight, we are not allowed to discuss really anything election related. It's going to go silent. So um, this is it, folks. The poll suggest varying degrees of Labour landslide, but first past the post is an odd system and does mean that a relative handful of votes in specific places, around 200,000 it's thought at this election, those could make the difference between an era-defining Labour landslide and a hung parliament. In some of the polling figures, they talk of the undecideds, those of us who even at this latest of late stages don't quite yet know who they're going to vote for. And if that's you, I'd like to hear from you this hour, this hour about what is stopping you going one way or t'other. For what it's worth, and I actually think it's, it's a rapidly declining sphere of influence, but for what it's worth, the Sun newspaper has this afternoon come out for Labour and is saying that the Tories need a period in opposition and that the country needs a change. I wonder whether you are coming to that view yourself or whether you worry about that kind of change that might be about to come. If you are undecided, as millions are, and it is you who could make the difference in some areas of the country between a Labour landslide, the like of which we have never seen before, and a hung parliament, if you're undecided, let's talk. 03456060973 is the number. Natasha Clark is LBC's political editor. Picking up on some of the polls already, Natasha, but more have dropped. Tell us what they're saying. Yes, we've uh, had a poll f come in this afternoon from More in Common in partners with our sisters, the news agents. They have another win for Labour. Um, better than 1997 by far. They have Labour on 430 seats, the Conservatives on 126. A total of eight cabinet ministers will lose their seats, including, uh, well, another seven, including Penny Mordaunt and Tory chairman Richard Holden are in races which are too close to call. They predict losses for Hunt, Shapps and Johnny Mercer. Gosh, you had to be very careful well. about saying that last bit. <laughs> they predict losses for Hunt. That was close. Sorry, carry on. Um, and we've <laughs> just had another poll um, in the last few minutes from YouGov giving Labour a majority of 212. So that is only the second biggest majority for any political party not seen since 1832 wow. and the Whigs. Although I see that the lower projection of that YouGov poll is 132 seats and the upper projection is 282, which is a huge difference. Look, pollsters I've been speaking to are genuinely really worried about the fact that so many of these polls show really, really differing numbers and they think there are 100, 100 and sort of 40 seats which are too close to call, which is why mm. they're so so um, different in terms of the numbers. So like, like I say, we've got some saying the Conservatives are on 50, some 70, some 120, some yeah. more. And, and, you know, for what it's worth, most people do expect the Conservatives to do a little bit better than that. And, you know, I've been on the battle buses this week and I am really genuinely detecting a lot of undecided voters, unless they just didn't want to tell me, which, of course, is really possible. <laughs> um, but so many people that I spoke to say they haven't made up their mind. And interestingly, you have had a bit of research out last week which said that these undecideds are particularly likely to have voted Tory in 2019 and be female as well, which is really interesting. We had a caller on from Ian Payne earlier this morning who was just that. They were a female mm. undecided voter who previously voted Tory but now doesn't know where to go. And of course, Rishi Sunak this week, that is all what he is trying to, to do. He is trying to sway those people who are undecided, who may have gone from the Conservatives and don't know where to turn or have gone to reform. And of course, that was the message from Boris Johnson last night when he appeared at that final rally. It's worth mentioning as well, Tom, for LBC listeners, we know so many of you are undecided. I think at the beginning of the campaign, we had around one in five of our listeners who were undecided. And you have said last week they think around one in eight people still yet to make up their mind. That was last That's a week. a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Yeah. And I genuinely do think there are a lot of people who feel this anti-politician, anti-politics sentiment and genuinely don't know where to put uh, their vote. So, yes, a lot of interesting developments. Obviously, these polls, let's be honest, will be out of date as well by the time mm. that we actually do go to vote. And the exit poll will be the one that really matters to everyone. And it's not going to pick up things, like I say, like Boris Johnson coming back into the campaign or the last few days of the campaign. It's just going to be too late to pick them up. Um, and in deciding what is making a difference to the way in which people vote, to what extent should people place really any importance in a particular newspaper coming out for a particular la uh, particular party? Yep, the Sun coming out for Labour Party tonight. I mean, it's a really interesting development, I personally think, and I you know, used to work at the Sun yep, newspaper, yep. so I do think it is interesting. And obviously, they are, they do not hold the same sway, of course, as they used to in terms of their readership, in terms of their influence. However, it is still a very important landmark moment. Their front page saying tomorrow we need a new manager. It doesn't mention Keir Starmer or Labour by name. It says it's time for a change. So it is a 
lukewarm endorsement from that paper. Keir Starmer's also responded in the last few minutes saying he's delighted to have the backing and support of the Sun. And it's a sign that Labour is now back in the service of the working people. And it is the first time since 2005 the paper has backed the Labour Party. And I do think it's, it is interesting because they are still a Tory leaning paper. Throughout this mm. campaign, you've seen them be incredibly sceptical of the Labour Party and slightly warmer towards the Conservative Party. But now saying, and like I say, it's one of the last times they could endorse, yeah. you know. Um, and yes, like saying in their, their leader column tomorrow, they said there were many conservative policies they do support, but it is just time for a change, they say, of manager. A really Put interesting bluntly, moment. the Tories are exhausted. They need a period in opposition to unite around a common set of principles which can finally bring an end an end to all the years of internal warfare, it is time for a change. Mm. And I think there would have been discussions within the newspaper about what to do. And I think they genuinely, you know, were, were thinking about what, what way to go. And, you know, there was obviously a lot of, they've given a lot of backing to, to Nigel, not backing rather, a lot of to- time and talk yeah. to Nigel Farage, to reform to this anti-politician sentiment. But today they rule out support for them, dismissing them as a one-ban band, dismissing the Lib Dems as a joke. You know, it really is about these two places and obviously there will be a little bit of maybe them seeing the way the wind is blowing for the country. I started the show with it because I just found in black and white I found it so extraordinary looking at the Salvation MRP poll last last night the last one that Salvation will do of the campaign that said that there's a 99% chance not that Labour will win a majority but that Labour will win a majority bigger than Tony Blair's 1997 1997 landslide. I mean that is it's hard to comprehend what British politics will look and feel Mm. like if there is any party with a majority that big. Yeah, and what I really take away from it is how volatile our electorate are. They just... You know, are looking yeah, at a bunch poli- of ch- people changing their mind all exactly. the time. Look at you. Of course, and, you know we have the right to do so. <laughs> but if you think about where the Tories have come in, yeah. nine, you know, two thousand and nineteen, that huge mm-hmm. eighty seat majority, people were saying, "Oh my goodness, Boris Johnson's got this massive majority. What on earth is he going to do with it? He could do anything he wants." And in reality, obviously, he was hit, you know, by the COVID pandemic, and, and that majority and what he was going to do with it then turned into something much, much deeper. But yes, our British politics to go from one to the other in five years. Nobody thought that Keir Starmer was going to be anywhere near winning an election. And it looks like, if these polls are correct, then he could be on track to win. And that is something that is so huge that has gone in one term what no one thought he was going to be able to do in two. But, 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 back to the point about undecideds again. Yeah. And they, I, they have a, there's a real say to be had here. There is. And, I, you know, people can't underestimate that. And that's a point Rishi Sunak has been making all week. He's saying that if 130,000 people change their minds, and obviously that will be mostly people who they think are voting for reform or the Labour Party and, and in those marginal constituencies. And it's interesting, on the Tory bus this week, we visited quite a lot of those constituencies that, according to the polls, they look like they're likely to just about hang on to. Mm. But they are now marginal constituencies and even places like Banbury, like, you know, Tory strongholds, it's crazy. Stratford as well, Nadim Zahawi's Mm. old seat as well. Those are places which genuinely should be really Tory strongholds and they're obviously not anymore. And those are the places that I think the Prime Minister is hoping that his message of don't go to reform, don't take that risk, you're just going to let the Labour Party in. And like I say, what will that mean for our politics? What will that mean for our parliament and our democracy? It's, you know, we're probably getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here by talking about it, but it's a question that lots of us are discussing. What does that mean if a party has such a huge majority? Could they split into lots of different parties like the Conservatives? I I do want to come to some calls in a moment, particularly those who are still undecided, um, because it's interesting to hear what might sway the view or what's what's not allowing people to to decide even at this late stage. But just on this question of volatility, very quickly, I don't get the impression that that level of volatility goes away even if there is a landslide the like of which we've not seen before. I think that volatility will still be there, won't it? It will. And I think, for you know, potentially for Keir Starmer, if, if he does go all the way, um, it's going to be really important for him to show people that he is delivering for them mm. and quickly, because if mm. he doesn't, it's going to really damage trust in the electorate who, you know, have ha- arguably had their trust damaged since Brexit, since Boris Johnson coming in, promising all this levelling up. It's a warning. It is a warning that they, you know, if you don't deliver for these people then it's going to be so shattering to to trust in our democracy if they cannot see people, politicians, that they've given them this blank cheque that Rishi Sunak keeps talking about. If the Labour Party get it, they need to do something with it, do something big and act fast. Otherwise, there's a real, real risk to a damage of our democracy.